Praise the Lord, everybody, and we're welcoming you to our Sunday morning broadcast. We're looking forward to getting into the Word and seeing what the Holy Ghost has to say to us this morning, because God is good, and He's good all the time, and all the time God is good. And we're just thanking God and praising God for His goodness and His mercy and His grace. And I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will be with you today, encouraging you and empowering you and blessing you, because God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be on top. He has called you as the victor and not as the victim. So let's give God the praise and give him the worship and give him the glory because God is our father. Praise God. We've been dealing with what is worship. And this is a new series that God has given us. And last week we began to share with you about how Lucifer was created and he was created as the worshiping angel of God. He was one of the archangels of God. He was the worship of God. Gabriel was the messenger of God and Michael was the warrior or the defender of God. And so we understand that Lucifer had a tremendously powerful position in heaven and he was the worship leader of God. And so we've been dealing with what is worship. And so today we're going to go back into what God wants us to understand as we break down worship. Worship needs to be taught throughout the body of Christ because there are many Christians who do not have the correct revelation of worship. Many Christians think that worship is just singing a slow song in a church service, but worship extends far greater than that. And so let's get into the word as we begin to see again, what is worship? And we began last week, and I want to share this with you again so that we'll give you the definition of the word worship. And we'll give it to you from the Old Testament and from the New Testament. The, this is the word here, the word is shaka, and it is the Old Testament word that is mightily used of God to describe worship. And the definition of it, and I'll just read you the definition as you read along, those of you that are watching and those of you that are listening, you can just listen. The word shaka, worship, it means to bow down or to prostrate oneself, to crouch, to fall down, to humbly beseech, to do reverence, and to worship. This word talks about bowing before a monarch or a superior and paying homage to him or her. That means that a person that is in high standing, uh, many times people would bow down and pay homage to them as a word, uh, as, a, as a gesture of respect. The word also talks about bowing down in worship to Yahweh or to God. And this is the main meaning of the word worship. It is to bow down in worship to God. All the earth should bow down and worship God as a response to God's great power. So that's the word shaka, and that's what worship meant in the Old Testament. Now, if you look at that word, you see, what do we keep seeing in it? Bowing down, prostrating, crouching, falling down. And this is what God wants you and I to understand, that worship involves a physical manifestation of you prostrating and bowing down and paying homage to God. And so many times people just want to uh, throw any little slow song up and they really don't get physically involved with worship. Now, I want you to understand something. Just like you get physically involved with praise by dancing and shouting, we are supposed to get physically involved in worship. And the physical involvement in worship is to bow down, to get down on your knees, to lift up your hands and worship and praising God, to prostrate yourself on your face. Have you ever been in a situation where the worship of God became so strong on you that you just laid flat out on your face with your hands out and you just was worshiping and you were just praising God and you were caught up in the moment? See, when you're in true worship, it affects you physically as well as mentally or emotionally and spiritually. 
So we need to understand that. So the true meaning of worship in the Old Testament meant a physical prostrating yourself, bowing down, kneeling down and paying homage to God, who is the creator of heaven and earth, because he is worthy of all worship. Praise God. All right. Now, then we go and we'll talk about the New Testament word. That's after the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. And so let's see what the New Testament word of worship means. It's the word proscunio. And it comes from the word pros, meaning to, and the word cuneo, meaning to kiss or to adore. So you are kissing to, or you're blowing kisses, or you're 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 giving your love and your <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> your love and your adoration to God. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> It means to worship. It means to do obeisance, to show respect. Now, no, here it is again, to fall or prostrate before. Literally, it means to kiss towards someone or to throw a kiss or a token of respect or homage to God. In the New Testament, generally, it means to do reverence or homage to God, to someone, and especially God, usually by kneeling or prostrating oneself before him. See, there's that kneeling and that prostrating again. It means to bow down, to prostrate oneself in reverence and homage. Now notice this, this worship is, is, is given toward a person as your superior to whom you owe reverence and homage or from whom one implores aid. So we notice now we worship God because he's our superior and we owe him reverence and we homage him or we prostrate ourselves before him because we are imploring aid from him. We want him to help us. It means to pay homage and reverence to deity. It renders divine honors and worship and adoration to God. And again, the basic idea is prostration. So again, we find in the New Testament, you are to physically get involved in worship. And many people don't realize and understand that you worship the Lord with all your heart and with all your mind. Worship should be an exercise. When you worship God, you ought to be expelling energy, not just singing a song, but physically you have to get your body into the area of worshiping God. Now, it's very interesting that the people in the world and many people in the church uh, when when music is going forth and 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 and, and uh, the devil's music is being played, come on and listen to what I'm saying. What is the devil's music? Any music that does not honor God and does not reverence God and Him alone. Any other music is the devil's music because music was created to worship God and to worship God alone. You see what happened when somebody tried to get the music and the worship toward them. Lucifer did that. And you see what happened to him? See that God, listen, God said, I am a jealous God. He said, my name is jealous. God wants worship for himself and himself alone because he is worthy of it. He is due it. And everybody that he created has been created and we are owing God our lives, our existence, and we need to give him alone all the worship. And so any music that is not worshiping and homage and giving homage and reverence to God is not worship. But when we find the devil's music being played, notice what happens when worship is being given to Satan. People always get their bodies involved in worship. Notice how, uh, especially when they're on the dance floor, I, I, I'm telling you, when folks are on the dance floor or even in their homes and on their dance floor, or they can be out in the street uh, when they're having uh, parades and parties. Notice when the songs are going forward, de the devil is being worshiped. People are dancing. People are, are moving their bodies. Come on and listen to what I'm saying. And they're and, and they're doing praises when they're dancing. And then when they slow the music down and then, you know, they're playing that slow drag and the slow music and, the, you know, that 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 groove music. That, and, and, and so they begin to dance, slow dancing. And so they they grab their partner and they're dancing on the floor and they're just grooving and and rolling and sliding and grooving. And again, but now with the slow music this time, they're still getting their bodies in. Involved. See, you need to understand something. God does not want, see, worship involves your body's 
actions and response to the songs that are being played. You need to understand that the devil understands this more than any of us. And you need to understand, and I'm going to show you uh, what happened uh, with the devil and how he got cast out, what actually caused him to fall, because you need to understand something that the Bible said when, when God was dealing with Lucifer, he said, because of his iniquity, he was cast out of heaven and he caused a third of the angels to fall. And he also caused all of the spirit, all of the beings that had bodies other than angels. He caused them to fall and they were kicked out of heaven. They were the demonic spirits and they became disembodied spirits and they were all cast into the earth. So now today, let's get into what happened and what was the iniquity that caused Satan to fall because this is so powerful. I want you to see this. So we understand this. We're going to be dealing with the iniquity of Satan's fall. Watch this now, because this is very powerful here. The result of Satan's iniquity. Now let's go to the book of Isaiah 14 and we're going to look at verse 12 through 15. And I want you to see something now. Watch this now. In Isaiah 14, 12 through 15, the Bible says this. Listen to what the Bible says. Listen to what the word of God says. It says in verse 12, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Now notice what happens in verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart. This is what he did. Lucifer said something in his heart. That was his innermost being. This came out of his innermost being, his, his center core. Notice now his whole heart, his center core became corrupted because he wanted something. Let's see. What did he want? He said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit up on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. You notice this, the notice now the worship and 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 the and the attention has gone off of God and has gone on to I. Lucifer, I want you to understand something. Satan is the god of selfishness. He is the God, come on, small case G, but he is the Lord of the selfish spirit. It is the I spirit. What is the middle letter in the word sin? It's I. But when you close the eye up and you connect the eye with the connection of God and turn that I into an O, then the word becomes son. So the connection with God takes the I out of sin and turns it to an O to make us a son. You might understand that. So we need to understand that when the O gets unraveled and it's and it loses its connection with God, it turns back into an I and it goes back into sin. I hope y'all are hearing what the Holy Ghost is saying. So now he wanted all of this worship under himself. And this is where sin came. Now notice what it says here in verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Notice what he wanted to do. He said, I will be like the most high. He wanted to be like God, but then listen to God's response. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, the sides of the pit. I want you to see that. He said, I want to be like God, but it was not the will of God for Lucifer to be like God. Uh, and so the penalty of trying to be like something that God didn't make you brought him down to hell to the sides of the pit. I want you to understand something. Listen to me. This is some powerful stuff. I love you and I want to give you the truth. Now notice this. When you are trying to be what God did not make you to be, listen to what I'm saying. The penalty is hell. And then the final penalty is the lake of fire. 
You need to understand that because see, when you don't want to be, or when you will not submit to who God called you to be, oh, glory to God, Jesus. Oh, I just got a jolt in my soul. My heart is hurting and aching. Oh, Rabaska, for people who don't want to be and don't want to yield to who God called them to be. And when we do that and we change and we try to be what we want, we get the same penalty that the devil got. And that is you will be cast into hell because when you refuse God, who is your creator, who created you for a purpose and he has a purpose for you. And when you don't want to be what he called you to be and you stop being what he wants you to be and you try to be what you want to be, you have rebelled against your creator. You've rebelled against God. And the ultimate punishment is the same thing that happened to Lucifer. You shall be brought down to hell the sides of the pit see he says see i want to be like the most high now the word like there it's very interesting it's the word dama and it means to be like or to compare or to resemble now understand this it means to make yourself like someone or something it means to compare god to something in other words what the devil was trying to do he wanted to be like god and the way that he was going to be like god he first compared himself to god and then he tried to make himself resemble god are oh, y'all hearing what i'm saying see he 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 compared see this this is why he said thou hast said in thine heart the devil sinned from his deepest innermost being because he made a desire he made a comparison he looked at god and he said saw how God was great and mighty, and he saw how all of the creation, all of the angels, including himself, were worshiping God because God was due the worship and he was worthy of worship. But Lucifer Kent started comparing himself to God. And what he saw was this. He saw that he was the instrument that God was using to lead the creation of God into worshiping and praising God. And so he decided, why should God get all of the praise and the glory when I'm the instrument that is being used to lead them into praising and worshiping God? Instead of God getting all of this and he's comparing himself, I ought to be getting all of this. So then he said, I want to be like God. So I'm going to change and charge them to worship me instead of them worshiping God. See, here's the problem. This is that, that sin, that wickedness, that iniquity that was first released into Lucifer. And that is this. He saw himself and he compared himself to God. And what he did was he saw that God was getting worship and praise. And then he saw that God was using him as an instrument to bring the worship and praise. And therefore he wanted the worship and praise to go to himself. This is the same thing that happens to many preachers, many ministers of the gospel, many musicians. God will begin to use a preacher or a minister of the gospel, male or female, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, or teachers, and you need to understand those of you that are called to ministry to preach the gospel, you have to got to guard yourself against this. And this is what you have to guard yourself against. God has created you and he has called you in the ministry as a preacher. Or if you are a musician, a minstrel, he has called you to play worship and to sing worship music unto the Lord. Now, with your purpose, you need to understand and watch this now. You need to understand that when you're doing it under the anointing of God, then there's going to be a great presence of God that is going to manifest itself because God said he inhabits the praises of his people. And so what happens is when God begins to get worshiped, he begins to inhabit that worship and his presence comes all over the place. You all understand that. But now what happens is here is the temptation, just like it fell on Lucifer, it'll fall on you because he'll make sure it falls on you. And that is, if God is using you to preach and to teach and to minister to people, and he is using you as a vessel to bring God's presence and his glory and his power into the lives of people, then stop and don't you dare start comparing yourself to God and start thinking, well, you know, God's getting these people healed, but he's using me to do it because of my gifts and my college. And so then you want to worship 
And you want to praise him, so you start taking all of the accolades and the glory unto yourself so that the people can put your name down. Oh, come on, somebody. Or they can put your name on the front of the church. Come on, somebody. Or they can put your name on the commercial. Come on, somebody. And so you begin to take that glory and that praise that is only due to God. See, even as a minister, whenever God is moving in miracle signs and wonders, God has to be the one that keeps getting the glory. You got to tell people this is God. This is God. He's using us, but it is God that is getting the glory. All the glory belongs to God. You, I don't care how great you preach. I don't care what kind of orator you are. I don't care how many scriptures you remember. I don't care how many scriptures you can quote. You can quote the Bible from Genesis to the maps. It doesn't make any difference. If in fact you are thinking that it is you that is the one that is due the praise and you that are the one that is due the worship. See, then you have entered into that sin. You have entered into your self idolatry. You have entered into selfishness and it has caused you to take the focus of your purpose off of the one who created you and trying to take and steal the very glory of God. The devil is a liar, but he's got a lot of people following that. And see, this same thing happens to musicians and, and singers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so they begin to compare themselves, but instead of comparing themselves to God, first of all, they compare themselves to God and said, I'm singing all these songs and the church people are, are crying and they're laying down and worshiping and so then they begin to feel that power thinking that it is them, but it is actually God getting the worship. And the only reason why he's using them is because they've been yielding to him and his anointing is flowing through them. It is not them. It's the anointing and the presence of God that's flowing through them. That's causing that worship and praise to go to God. So now they start seeing that mm, God gets this. The people are, are really bound down. I can really be blessed. I want people to begin to honor and worship me. So what do they do? They begin to create songs and worship that they can get the honor and the glory for. They begin to create songs and they begin to uh, get even if. See, you need to understand this is this is powerful. See, people, there are people right now who are deceived by the devil and they don't know these this this truth that I'm teaching you. And so they're being deceived by the devil into thinking that music is only sound or music is only notes that are played on a on a, on an instrument. When in essence, they don't understand that music is spirit. And it is worship and based off of which spirit is removed, is moving you into the music determines which spirit you're worshiping. And so now they begin to play the music and now they want to get the accolades unto themselves. So they began to, to create music with the purpose of winning a Grammy or winning a stellar award or winning a trumpet award. Why? Because now they want to get that little idol, that little, you know, the little idol that has been made, that little idol that has been made, that little metal idol or whatever it is that they can get that award and they hand it to them. And then they stand up in front of the people and say, I thank God. I just thank God. And I'm just so, I'm just so blessed. And I just give God all the praise. Oh, but why are you then taking on the accolades of what you're the greatest worshiper and you've got the greatest worship song. God is not a God of competition. You need to understand something. You might have the most beautiful voice. You might play the most melodious music, but God doesn't listen to this now, God doesn't honor that. And he doesn't compare your music like that. He doesn't do that. That's the spirit of competition. That's the spirit of sin. That's the spirit of I that's competition. And they're creating songs to get these idols, these, these awards from man. Man cannot tell you what God likes. Man cannot tell you what God honors. Man cannot tell you what God accepts. Only God can do that. And if a man says it, then he has to be, or she has to be speaking by revelation from God in order for us to know what is the mind or the will of God. So I want you to understand that what caused Lucifer also causes us to sin when we begin to compare God to ourselves. And you need to understand you cannot compare God to yourself because God created you. You're so much less than God. Even though we've been created in his image and in likeness, he is still our creator and our, our God. And so you need to understand that. And this is what caused Lucifer to fall. He wanted to be like God. He wanted to be like the most high. And guess what happened? He got Got brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And so this is what happens when you try to watch this. Now, when you try 
to be like God. Now, I'm going to teach you something today that's going to be a blessing to you. The Bible says that Lucifer fell because iniquity was found in him. And this is the iniquity. He wanted to be like God. He wanted to be more than what God created him to be. And then he wanted to compare himself and to be like God. But God didn't create him that way. And so he has rebelled against what God created him to be. Now, Let's see the result of Lucifer's sin. It was the iniquity. Now let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 50, chapter 59. In Isaiah 59 verses one and two, look at what the word of God says. It says, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities has separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Now, we understand that the word iniquities is the word a one, and it means iniquity, it means evil, it means guilt, it means punishment. So this word, it means evil, guilt, and punishment. I want you to understand this word iniquity, it talks about sin that is particularly evil because what it does, it, it, it twists and perverts the gospel of the Lord and it does it deliberately. You need to see this now because this is what happens here, that when iniquity is, it is that particular evil that conveys the idea of twisting and perverting the gospel of God. And it is being done deliberately. See, this is what Lucifer was doing. He was deliberately twisting and perverting what God had created him to be so that he could be something that God didn't want him to be. And that caused him to be evil. It caused him to be guilty before God, because this word iniquity also means, watch this now, it means the punishment that goes with this deliberate act of evil. Come on and listen to what I'm saying. It means sin and it means a transgression in a conscious sense. What does that mean? It means that you know what you're doing. You, you're consciously making a decision to go against the word of God. And it also means the guilt that results from that sin. So we're finding now that the word iniquity here, it is evil, it is guilt, it is sin, it is punishment. Listen to what the word of God is saying. It is because one is constantly twisting and perverting the, plan, the plans of God for your life. And it is the guilt of the wrongdoing. Notice when he talks about the guilt of your wrongdoing, it's not talking about you feeling guilty because you did bad. It's talking about God says, and, and declares and pronounces you guilty for breaking his law and perverting his way of, of, of the way he created you. You need to understand that. So it's deliberately, consciously twisting and perverting the word, the will, and the plans of God. And then it also talks about your conscious wrongdoing. You're making it a decision. You're doing this and you know what you're doing. Praise God. I want you to understand. And then God declares that you are guilty because of what you're doing. And then he punishes you. That's what iniquity does. So notice now iniquity is something. And so now notice what the iniquity does. He says your iniquities have separated between you and God. And it means that you have been separated from God. You've been divided and detached from God. You remember when Lucifer was the, 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 the anointed cherub that covers he was the anointed cherub that covereth. Lucifer was, he was the worship and praise of God. The Bible said he was full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. He was the anointed cherub of cover that covers. So that means that the spirit of God had, watch this now, overshadowed him and overpowered him and empowered him to produce worship and to produce praise. It was by the spirit of God. So the spirit of God and Lucifer were connected. Lucifer was connected to God's spirit. He was able, now watch this now, God, God always desires to be worshiped and praised. God has moods and his moods are how, how he feels about us a certain time or certain thing. Sometimes God wants to be worshiped. Sometimes God wants to be praised. Sometimes God just wants you to be still and just meditate and know that he is God. There are times when God wants to be praised. And so when God wants to be praised because he Lucifer was so connected to the spirit of God that when God's spirit, you remember, 
remember now when God, God is a spirit, but God also, watch this now, is, is, is powerful. And when God speaks out of his mouth, he speaks words and those words are carried on the, on, on, on the envelope of sound and his words have, watch this now, frequencies. God has frequencies that he vibrates at. Listen to what I'm saying. His word vibrates at frequencies and whatever he says, whatever he says has the frequency that is going to create whatever it is God has said. And so when God said, would say, I want to be worshiped or I want to be praised, then those words would enter into Lucifer and those sounds would begin to vibrate through Lucifer's body. And watch this now. And the frequencies that God was on for praise would then begin to reverberate in Lucifer. And because Lucifer was in agreement with God and was yielded to God, then Lucifer would begin to vibrate at the same frequencies that God's, watch this now, that God's praise was to be vibrating at. And so then they became one in resonance. What does that mean? Lucifer began to vibrate at the same rate that God was vibrating. His frequency became God's frequency. They came together and they produced a loud noise or a loud sound that's called resonance. When that happened, Lucifer's body began to vibrate at the rate of the frequencies of God's praise, which the vibrations would then cause the horns or the wind instruments in him to blow. It would cause the percussive instruments in him to beat, and it would call the, cause the stringed instruments in him to play. So he was not playing on his own. He was playing because he was yielded. Listen to what? I am saying right now, he was playing because he was in resonance with the frequencies of the vibration of God's praise. So he was always anointed to play what God wanted the way God wanted it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So now this is how Lucifer operated. He just didn't get down there and just start playing. He played based off of the frequencies and the, watch this now, the, 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 the vibrations of the sound that God wanted to hear. And it would vibrate in Lucifer's body. And because he was in agreement with God, then he would produce the sound. His body would just begin to yield to whatever the spirit of God was doing. This is a same thing that happens to you musicians, listen to what I'm saying, is that when you yield yourself to the Spirit of God and you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to move through you, then God's mood, whatever he wants through your music, he will begin to speak that mood into you and the sound of his voice, come on and listen to what I'm saying, will bring forth frequencies and vibrations from the Holy Spirit. Then the Holy Spirit who is in you shall begin to vibrate and, and to reverberate inside of you. And because you're yielded to God, then the Holy Spirit will cause the frequencies that's in your body to begin to vibrate at the same rate as the frequencies of the praise or the worship that God wants. And then what happens is your body begins to respond to the frequencies of God's praise. And then your hands begin to play on the instrument what God wants. Your hands begin to create your mind, your mouth as you blow the wind instruments or your hands as you play the stringed instruments or your hands as you play the percussive instruments, they begin to vibrate at the right that God is vibrating and you will create music based off of what's coming out of God and not what is coming out of you. See, this is the problem with musicians. When God begins to move through them like that, then they think it's them making the music. And so then the music is powerful. And then they, they, they begin to exalt themselves and to think more highly of themselves than they ought to think. I hope you all are understanding this. The same thing that happens with preachers. God's got a message. Listen to what I'm saying, ministers of the gospel. Those of you that preach and those of you that prophesy and those of you that move in the gifts of the spirit. How does God move? Are you hearing what the Holy Ghost is saying to you today? God has moods and he desires for things to come to pass. Maybe he wants preaching to go forward now. And so he's, he begins to send forth his word. Come on and listen. And he speaks his word and his word has a frequency that he wants it to preach. And so then the word is sent and it begins to vibrate. 
the Holy Spirit that's inside the minister begins to receive that revelation from God. You remember what the Bible said? The Holy Spirit, whatsoever he shall hear the spot, the Father speak, that shall he speak. And so this is what happens. So when the Father speaks the Holy Spirit that's in the preacher, then the Holy Spirit begins to take and, and, and receive that vibration and the frequencies of the preaching that God wants to be preached and the message that God wants to be preached because God wants to minister to his people. And so the Holy Ghost begins to vibrate. And then because you're being led by the spirit, remember you are led by the spirit, then you are the sons and daughters of God. So then you begin to yield to the Holy Spirit because he's in you. And then your body, the Holy Spirit will begin to cause your body to begin to vibrate at the same frequencies that the word of God is vibrating at. And then the vibration will cause your body to begin to open up your mouth and he will cause to bring to remembrance to your body and to your mind, the scriptures that God wants you to preach. And then you will preach at the resonance and at the vibrations that God wants you to preach. And it will become a powerful message because then the word will come out of you as a minister and go into the people who are listening to the word. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying because I'm preaching real good right now. And I tell you the Holy Ghost is moving mightily. I hope y'all are getting this. And so then the word goes into the people and then the people who want to sit and receive the word, then they will receive the word and the Holy Ghost will take the word uh, that has come from God uh, and it that get, you know, went from God uh, through the Holy Spirit to the preacher and then into the preacher and then out of the preacher into the people and into the Holy Spirit in the person. And then the Holy Spirit takes the word and he vibrates that word in you that are listening. And then because you want to hear the voice of God, then God will make you be begin to vibrate at the rate, come on somebody, and at the frequency that the word of God is ministering to you. And therefore the word will begin to affect your body and the word will cause you to receive the word. And that's why in whenever you're hearing the word, whatever the word is vibrating at for you, come on somebody, then God will begin to do that work in you. You might be hearing a message on tithes and offerings, but God wants healing to flow into your body. And while you're listening to the message on tithes and offerings, the Holy Spirit is revibra vibrating and, 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 and bringing a, a frequency of, of tithes and offerings to you. But uh, along with that frequency is also bringing healing. And so when you begin to receive the tithe message, uh, then the healing virtue flows through your body. And all of a sudden you'll get up and you'll start praising God and call somebody. I was listening to a message on tithes and my back straightened up. I was listening to a message on tithes and I got healed of cancer. He wasn't even preaching on tithes. She wasn't even prophesying about tithes, I mean, uh, healing. They were prophesying about tithing, but I got healed. How is that possible? Because every message that comes forth out of a minister's mouth from God, notice now you need to understand when God releases a message to be preached, oh, listen to what the Holy Ghost is saying. When God releases a message to be preached, he, now notice now God is all knowing and all powerful. So he knows what everybody, every person is gonna hear that message. And so what he does is he sends that message out, the message, say for instance, tithing, but he also knows how many people are going to be listening to the message of tithing. And so each person has different needs in their lives. So not only do they have the need to know about tithing, but somebody in, in California might need to be delivered from homosexuality. Somebody in Georgia might be uh, need to be delivered from uh, oppression of depression. Somebody in New York might, meet, uh, might need to get financial breakthrough. Somebody in New Mexico might need to get set free from uh, uh, a spirit of infirmity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody in uh, uh, um, uh, somebody in Minnesota might meet, need to get set free, watch this now, from depression. And so all of these people are gonna be listening to that one message on tithes and offering. So what God does is when he sends the message out, as the Holy Spirit takes the message from God and releases it to the preacher, then he begins to vibrate through the preacher, that message of God. Then when it comes out of the mouth of the preacher, and it goes into the, the, the ears of those that are hearing all over the world, then guess what? The person that is in Minnesota that needs to be delivered from depression, God also releases that vibration of depression deliverance along with the tithing message. The person that needs to be in California delivered from homosexuality along with the tithing message, tithing offerings message, 
He also releases a delivering spirit from the spirit of homosexuality. The person that needs to be healed from uh, abuse, uh, then the spirit of God releases in that tithing message, uh, worship message, the spirit of deliverance of abuse. Right now, as I'm ministering and while I'm preaching, I don't know all the needs that are out there. I don't know what God, who God is targeting, but I do know one thing. I'm teaching on worship. I'm teaching on praise, but at the same time, every one of you that are listening to this word right now, there are needs in your life that God is also releasing to meet those needs in your life. And so as you receive this message, you're not just receiving the message on tithes, I mean, what on, on worship, but you're also receiving whatever it is you need that God is trying to get to you so that as you receive the message, you'll also receive the freedom and the deliverance or the blessing. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying, because this is what happened with Lucifer. But now notice what the Bible says, what happened. This is how he used to operate. So he, this is why his music was perfect. This is why his music was supernatural. That's why they had a super, supernatural worship and praise going on. When God would begin to praise, remember now, the glory of God was flowing through the body of Lucifer, whose body was covered with all the precious stones. You remember those precious stones? The very precious stones that covered the body of Lucifer are the same foundation stones that will be in the New Jerusalem on the walls of the New Jerusalem at the foundation. You need to understand this is how God invested in Lucifer. And so God, who being light, sending out his sound and his vibrations into Lucifer's body. And when the light of God hit the, the stones that were flowing and mightily manifesting themselves in the body of Lucifer, there was a kaleidoscope of colors and, and great majesty that was released uh, and the worship and the praise was going forth. So while sound was going forth and praise was going forth and the song of the Lord was going forth, there was a light show, come on somebody, so that the glittering and the kaleidoscope scope of colors was going forth and there was a manifestation of the glory of God and all of the earth and all of the creation of God were worshiping God in one voice and in one spirit and so that's how God would get his praise and then signs and wonders and miracles would take place deliverances would take place because this is the power of true worship. You need to hear what a Kabasaka. Somebody's feeling the power of the worship of God right now. Somebody's getting an anointing that's flowing into your body. Somebody's getting an anointing in your body right now. Thank you, Jesus. And that anointing is coming in your body right now. And it's flowing through your body right now. It's that extra thing that you needed. It's more than just getting the message on worship. But God is giving you that extra thing that you asked him for. That thing that you need and God said, I'm about to minister to that. Vibrate at the vibration of the word of God and let the word move in you right now and cause you to receive a supernatural anointing of signs and wonders and miracles flowing through your body. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Now notice what it says here. It says, but your iniquities have separated. Do y'all hear that? Your sin, Lucifer, has separated, has divided and detached you between you and your God. So all that God was doing through Lucifer before iniquity, when he wanted to be like God and he changed, he got separated and detached so that God never ever again would move through Lucifer like that. And Lucifer lost his glory. He lost the power and he lost the ability to transform the creation of God into worshiping and praising God. See, that's what iniquity will do. When you are falling into sin and iniquity, it separates you and detaches you from God. Once you get detached from God, then God is no longer moving through you by his power and his authority because your sin has separated you from God. And therefore the blessings that God wants you to have, that extra that God wants you to have is no longer there now because you've been separated from the blessings of God's vibrations and his rhythm and his resonance. Come on, somebody, and his frequencies that you're not vibrating at the same frequency of God because iniquity has detached you and separated you from God. Watch this. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face that he will not hear. That means he is 
concealed his face. Because of sin, God hides his face. He conceals himself from you. His face has been concealed. His face is his, his recognition. It's his face. It's how you, uh, uh, when a face is used, it can be substituted for the entire person. In other words, what it's talking about is the face of God is hidden from you. The recognition of God, that word face also means recognition. So what ha happens is now that you have gotten into sin, God then conceals or hides his face or his person and his recognition from you. What does that mean? He will hide his recognition, conceal his recognition. That means now that what you, you used to be able to uh, recognize as God, what you used to be able to accept and receive as God, God is hiding it from you now. Now you can't recognize the voice of God. You don't know if it's God or if it's your sin nature or if it's the devil. You just don't know what you're hearing. You don't know because you, your iniquities have separated you from God. This is why God said, uh, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He wants to get you caught up in iniquity so he, he can separate you from recognizing the voice of God. You need to recognize the voice of God because you have to be led by the spirit. You have to, you need to recognize God because it is by recognizing God that you're able to love the brethren. And this is how the world will know that we are disciples of the Lord by the love that we have one another for one another. But what if you can't recognize God anymore? What if you can't recognize his voice? What if you can't recognize his leading? What if you can't recognize the spirits that he's trying to show you in your life? Now you've set yourself apart from God and God has hidden his face from you. You can't recognize anything anymore. You don't know what kind of music, the music you're listening to because God is not, has hidden his recognition from you. You're not now recognizing music and thinking it's God when it's worshiping the devil. You don't have any kind of discerning anymore in your life because you have separated because of your iniquities, separated you from God. You can't be used of God anymore. God used to be able to speak to you and give you gifts operating in you, but you separated yourself now because of iniquity. Now you don't prophesy like you used to. You may preach messages and you may preach with the aura uh, that you had and you may preach with the, with, the, with the confidence that you had. But guess what? The anointing is no longer there. Ichabod has been written over your face and now you're speaking words, but they're just loud words. You're speaking in chaotic rhythm and your rhythms are going forth. Your cadence is going forth. Oh, come on, somebody and hear what I'm saying. But the anointing is no longer there. People are getting stirred up in their flesh now instead of being stirred up in the spirit and their bodies are beginning to respond to a fleshly message because you've yielded it over to the spirit of Satan. I hope you're hearing what the Holy Ghost is saying because God wants you to understand your iniquities have separated you from God's face and his recognition so that you no longer know who God is or what God is. And then notice what the Bible says. It says, your sins have hid his face, his recognition from you and that he will not hear you. He won't hear you. He won't hear you and he won't hear me. Listen, God's not going to hear us anymore. Why isn't he not going to hear us? He's not going to hear us. Why is he not going to hear us? The reason why is because the word men there, it doesn't mean hearing. That word mean, men here, the word that he uses for here, it's the word M-I-N, men. And it doesn't mean not hearing. What it means is far from, out or away from. And it means a spiritual and a spatial separation from God. Listen to what I'm saying. So this word means you're far from, out from, away from God, and you are separated spatially from God, spiritually and physically. So what this word is talking about when it says he will not hear, his will is not to hear you because your iniquities have separated you spatially so far away from God. You so far away from God that you have gotten way out there in some place where God is not and so he won't hear you because you're not in the place of hearing. See, your iniquities have separated you from God and made you to be in a place 
spatially, physically separated, physically apart from God. And this is not only physically a spatial distance, a physical space, but it is also a spiritual space where you have spiritually been so separated from God that you're way out there in the stratosphere of wickedness, out there in the stratosphere of selfishness, out there in the stratosphere of self-righteousness, out there in the stratosphere of idolatry. And so you're idolizing yourself. You're so far away from God that God won't hear anything that's coming out of your mouth. This is what the Holy Ghost is trying to get you to see. This is what he's trying to get me to see. He wants us to understand that his word is his power. Come on and listen to what I'm saying. His power. He is upholding all things by the word of his power. And when you yield to the spirit of God, when you give in to the spirit of God, when you allow the Holy Spirit to begin to resonate in you and you yield to that resonance, it will affect your physical body. See, this is what happens with music. This is why people, your music is travels on sound and it has vibrations and it has rhythms. Come on somebody. And you need to understand something that when music is played, the sound of the music, listen to what I'm saying, and the frequencies of the music go into your body. Now, your body has been made and it has frequencies that cause your body to vibrate. It is called your body rhythms. It is the frequencies that your body vibrates at. Now, when music comes into you and you listen to music, what music does is it bypasses the frontal lobe of your brain and it goes directly in through your ear gates and it goes into your body and the frequencies go in and begin to affect your heart. And remember now, your heart is what sets the, re the frequencies and the rhythm of your body by the way your heart beats. Now, listen to what I'm saying to you. So when music comes into you and it goes directly through your ears into your body and it begins to deal with your heart rhythms. Now, based off of the frequencies of the music that you're listening to and the frequencies come from the spirit that's producing the music. Now, remember now. Whatever frequencies that spirit is producing the sound of the music to is going to affect your heart rhythms and then your heart will begin to vibrate and begin to vibrate at the same frequencies that the music is. And therefore your heart will then begin to resonate with the music. And then it will cause your body to begin to function and to do whatever the music is causing your body to do. And this is why your body will begin to get out on the dance floor and begin to back it up on somebody. Come on somebody. Or you get out there on the dance floor and you're grinding and just bumping and grinding with folk. Come on and listen to what I'm saying because you're listening to the devil's music. And so that, that's why the devil will bring out songs like he did with Marvin Gaye talking about sexual healing. But all they were doing was having sexual relationships with a, with a, a music that was resonating in the bodies of people with lust and adultery and fornication and homosexuality. That's what was coming to the music. And the people that were listening to that, they weren't getting healed. They were being impaired powered by the devil. They were being infiltrated by demonic spirits. This is what was going on as they listened to that music. You need to understand something. Music is a spirit. Lucifer is a spirit and music is a spirit. Music is not sound. Music travels through sound. Music is a spirit that vibrates at the, watch this now, that vibrates at the frequency of who the spirit is that made it. And there are only two spirits that make music. The Holy spirit and the Lucifer who is now Satan. Those are the only two spirits that create music. You need to hear what I'm saying. The music that you as a safe, sanctified, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost and mighty burning fire and on your way to heaven, Christian, the music that you are filled with is the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that is in you to, to cause your body to begin to vibrate and to have the frequencies of the music of God. But at the same time, the devil can also spend, uh, send his music to you. And if you yield to that, then you'll change your, your frequencies. Come on and listen to what I'm saying. You'll change your harmonic progressions. Come on, somebody. You'll change your runs and your riffs and you'll take them from running and riffing 
in the word to worship God and to running and riffing and singing 16 minutes on one note in order for people to see how great you can use your voice. Are you all hearing what I'm saying in the name of Jesus? You've hit that note and you've riffed that note so many times that people don't even understand what it was you were singing in the first place because it's been riffed for 10 minutes. You need to understand what I'm saying. God is trying to get you and me to understand that true worship comes from us having a relationship with God and allowing God to move in us and through us by his spirit. And then we are to sync ourselves with the frequencies that come from God. And then we will walk in the revelation of God's power. I pray that you've gotten some out of this today. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is moving by his spirit. He's speaking to you. He's speaking to me. It is up to you and I to listen to the voice of God and to receive the revelation of his, his word because it is his word that brings us deliverance. It is his word that gives us freedom and we must yield to that word so that we can walk in the presence of God. I pray right now, every one of you, I want to pray for you now. I want to speak the word of God over you by the word that has gone forth today. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of your Holy Ghost, I pray that every person that has listened to this word, that the word that has come forth out of me has been through the frequencies that came from you. And I pray that the frequencies go into them and that they receive the word of God, the way the Holy Spirit gives it to them and then give them those extra things. I pray father that they have need of things that even though we were teaching on worship, but father, whatever area of need that they had from you to minister to them in, let that manifest into them right now and let them receive it by the power of the Holy ghost. Satan, I break your power over every person that's listening to this message. I break your power right now in the name of Jesus. You will not frustrate the people of God. You will not deceive the people of God. I speak right now that everybody that is listening to the sound of my voice, the revelation of God has come and they are receiving this revelation. They are receiving the word and they are listening to the word. They are vibrating at the same rate that the word of God is vibrating at and they are receiving the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm speaking right now. I break the spirit of depression and frustration and bitterness and anger and unforgiveness and hurt and sorrow and depression and suicide and self uh, self mutilation. I curse you in the name of Jesus from loneliness. I break the power of the spirit of depression and anger and, and, and self hatred. You in the name of Jesus, every word that has come forth today from this word is vibrating with the deliverance of God. For the Bible says, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and the, the recovering of sight and to the blind and to speak the release and open the prison gates and the prison doors of those that are in prison by the spirit of almighty God. I speak right now that the blind will eyes will be open. If you're physically blind, you'll physically be able to see if you're spiritually blind, those blinders have come off of you now so that you can spiritually receive what the Lord is saying. And then you can make a decision based off of your mind is seeing clearly what God is saying. I'm speaking right now in the name of Jesus for every prison, prisons of addiction, prisons of control, prisons of selfishness, self-righteousness, prisons of witchcraft, prisons, any prison that you're in right now. I break the power of that prison over you. The doors have been removed, released now, and come out of that prison in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, I thank you right now that the people are being blessed. And that this word and this anointing is filling up their houses. It's filling up their cars. It's filling up the classrooms. It's filling up wherever they are listening to this right now. And I pray on their job, let the presence of God come around their desk or their cubicles of wherever they have to work right now. Fill their office, fill their room, fill them, fill up the bullpen areas that they're sitting in, fill up every place that they are sitting and listening and let the presence of God begin to saturate that room. Let the vibrations coming out of that Christian begin to resonate and move out over out from that Christian and go into other people and cause other people to begin to resonate at the same vibrations and the same rate that the Holy Spirit is. I pray right now for the spirit of evangelism to flow freely and mightily over 
for your people. Father, I thank you right now. We are called of God. We are anointed of God. We are the head and not the tail. We are above only and not beneath. And we will not be defeated. We will not be deterred because we are walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you and we give you alone all the praise and we give you all the glory in Jesus name. Praise God. Well, I pray that message blessed you and I pray the prayer, the prayer blessed you. I'm telling you the power of God. I can't hardly get it out of my mouth. The words are coming so powerfully. Praise God. Well, thank God for you listening today. And I pray that you continue to walk in this word. And remember, worshiping God means getting your body involved. Give God all of you. When you come out of worship, you ought to have expended some energy giving God worship and giving him praise because this is what God wants. Oh, we're going to keep getting into this. And next week, we're going to find out why Satan hates you so much. What is it about you that makes him hate you with such a hatred that he would that that he would do anything that he can in order to destroy you? We'll be dealing with that next Sunday. But praise God today. Receive this revelation. Walk in this meat and this truth that God has given you today for truly God has blessed us all and we thank God for his word. Praise God until next Sunday. I want you to be blessed and I want you to walk in the presence of God and the power of God and know for certain that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Now spend all this week, this week exercising your energy to worship and praise God. See you soon in Jesus name.